How's it going guys? Oh, just got my mics over here. How's it going guys? My name is Lewis, and as AEW Dynamite approaches its 200 episode, I wanted to show my appreciation by creating a tier list ranking all of AEW's active roster, alongside a countdown from my least favorite to my all-time favorite talent. So yeah, this is gonna be a long one. Just a heads up, I want to make a few disclaimers so that way there won't be any misunderstandings. Number 1. My rankings will be solely based on their TV characters, not their real-life counterparts. Number 2. Out of respect, I won't be mentioning wrestlers who have passed away or have left the company. Number 3. There will be separate tier lists for women and men. Number 4. This list will reflect on their AEW run, not what they did elsewhere. The only exception is if that promotion is part of that storyline. And number 5, this is all my opinion, so this is not the end all be all. One last thing before I start, you guys may have watched my two wrestling icebergs, and with them getting a bit outdated, I've been wondering if you guys want to see a more refined, updated version. Um, if you guys are totally down for that, just let me know in the comments, but with that out of the way, here is my AEW tier list. John Moxley, Young Bucks, Papa Buck, Uncle Buck, Moxley, Moxley, Michael Nakazawa, Kenny Omega, Moxley! This will be in alphabetical order, so we'll be starting off with Aaron Solo. Um, Aaron Solo, I mean, other than his stink in QTV, he's tolerable for the most part, he does exceptionally well matches, but other than that, I just really don't care about him, um, I don't know, yeah, the guy just gets a D for me. Action at Andretti, the most notable feat from Andretti is that he beat Jericho clean, and I, I will say he's pretty athletic in the ring and definitely has a good look, he could use a bit of experience, but um, yeah, I, I think it's safe to give him a C. Adam Cole, baby. So, I would like to talk more about his time in NXT, but this is an AEW list, so yeah. I would like to first point out that he had an amazing debut at All Out. I was there, so yeah, I know that. The only fumble I can think of when it comes to Adam Cole and AEW is probably the Undisputed Elite. Uh, I really don't know the entire um, ordeal behind all that, but it was definitely a missed opportunity. However, he's managed to move past that, and his work with MGF has really become some of the best work, so hopefully he can win the AEW Championship soon. But for now, I would give him an A. Bebe. Adam Page. Since day one, Adam Page has been on the spotlight of one day reaching the top, and by god he did it. Uh, however, since Full Gear of 2021, I feel like he's had a few ups and downs around the card. I do think his promo work does need work. Um, but other than that, him with the Elite have not disappointed, so he gets an A. The Dark Order. Now, the Dark Order has been around since forever. However, I feel like they really have failed to stand out. I feel like not everyone fails to stand out. I just feel like a few of them, mostly Alex Reynolds, maybe Stu Grayson. I don't know. I, I mostly, I'm mostly familiar with John Silver and Evil, you know, to be honest. They are a pretty good prominent tag team. I. Uh, don't, but I, they just, there are just so many better people out there in the roster, so I really don't know. I think it'd be kind of bad to just put them at a D, maybe a C. Andrade El Idolo. Andrade has the potential of being one of the most decorated talents of this generation, but I feel like there's something that's stopping him because honestly, he has the, he has the skill, he has the aura, yet it's never culminated into something bigger than his time back in 2017. On the bright side, or maybe in this case dark, his storyline with the House of Black is pretty interesting, so um, yeah, it, hopefully it culminates into something better. I'm gonna give him a C for now. The Spanish Announced Project, uh, I don't know, I, honestly these guys don't really click with me, um, their win-loss record doesn't really help, so uh, yeah, I'm just gonna put them at a D. Angelo Parker and Matt Menard, um, yeah, I know these are like the studs for the Jericho Appreciation Society, but I really don't care about them. I mean, other than that, it's kind of funny how Angelo Parker just pulls out his comb like a knife and, you know, uh, Matt Menard just screams a lot. Yeah, they just get a D. The Acclaim, now Max Caster and Anthony Boeings are just entertaining. They're both charismatic as hell, they're both super over with the crowd over the scissoring gimmick, and just an impressive tag team duo, no doubt about that. Having Billy Gunn as the third wheel really made their segments much more entertaining. Um, yeah, S tier, man. They're both great workers and they deserve their success. Anthony Agogo. Wait, this guy still works with them? Honestly, this, this is just a huge shock to me. Agogo is a pretty amazing athlete outside of AEW. He's won a bronze medal. He has an 11-1 boxing record. However, his run in AEW has become much of a joke. And as of this recording, Agogo's last match was in August of 2022. So I'm just going to put him in the huh category because I really didn't even know he was still working with them. AR Fox. Now, AR Fox really surprised me because this guy's been in AEW for less than a year. And he's definitely got people talking about him. I think he's definitely better than Top Flight, that's for sure. As of this recording, Orange Cassidy will be taking on AR Fox for a title shot, so that's something I really wanted to see. Hopefully he does win, but I doubt it. But for now, he gets a B. The Varsity Athletes. 
Yeah, I really don't know. They really don't stand out. I think I'm just gonna put them at a hub because I mean, I don't think I've really seen them fight maybe uh, from a maybe one or two times, but yeah, I don't I don't care really. Austin and Colton Gunn. Hmm. You know what? I'm just gonna say it. Um, they they know their place well. They know their position well. They've had a tag team run, not a successful run, but they've had a tag team run nonetheless. Um, another thing, maybe I guess their entrance is kind of cool. I like it when they do the finger guns. They're not completely terrible, so I think I'm gonna put them out of B. Bandito. I think Bandito is more of an ROH type of guy. But moving past that, uh, Bandito really hasn't done much for AEW other than maybe that fire match against Jericho. Uh, he gets a low C. Considering there's a huge influx of masked wrestlers, it's kind of hard for him to stand out. Big Bill. I will say I'm super glad that Big Bill is in a much healthier condition than he was five years ago. Personally, his in-ring work has been a lot better. He seems like he knows where he's at in the company. He's definitely a valuable player and I do hope that we get to see him more. Uh, I'm going to put him at a low B. Billy Gunn. Who would have thought that Billy Gunn would have seen a resurgence in 2023? The fact that he can present himself physically on the mic speaks volume to how underrated Billy Gunn is compared to the other legends. He's definitely a huge MVP. He looks like he's having a great time. Uh, hopefully he does win the trios titles. I'm really rooting for that. Uh, yeah, no, he's definitely an A. Brandon Cutler. It's kind of wild how dumb his gimmick is, but surprisingly enough, the guy has a crazy physique. But his entire premise for me is an I don't know. So uh, for me, he gets a D. Brian Cage. Now, Cage has really become better in the ring over time. Uh, I think he's a reliable worker, but I do think his current gimmick is pretty boring. He could grow to at least the upper mid card, but uh, for now, I think he's a high C. Brock Anderson. Okay, for starters, uh, like father, like son. But in reality, Brock Anderson is kind of lame. I mean, he's still pretty green in the ring. And from what I've seen of him in AEW TV, it's kind of mediocre to say the least. Uh, he's still 26, but he has plenty of time to grow. So yeah, I, I'm just going to put him out of D for now. The House of Black. Now, I think the House of Black have the coolest entrance in the entire roster. Yes, even better than Kansas. But not only do they look cool, but each team member is unique in their own sense. You have Brody King as the tank. You have Malachi Black as the Muay Thai expert. You got Buddy Matthews as, um, I don't know, the guy with no tattoos, but it's okay, he doesn't need them. Regardless, the House of Black are currently the longest reigning trios champions, and it doesn't seem like they're going to be losing them anytime soon. Uh, they're going to get an A in my opinion. Brian Danielson, even without WWE but like in his resume, um, he still gets an S. After that match with Okada at Forbidden Door, I mean, it's pretty clear that the guy is a legend. The guy has had classic matches already with the likes of Kenny Omega, John Moxley, Adam Page, that 60 minute Iron Man match with MJF. Um, and like I as previously mentioned, he finished the match with Okada with a broken arm. Like the guy is an absolute goat. And I'm not saying that because he looks like one. <laughs> he gets an S tier. FTR. Tribalism aside, WWE really f***ed up letting go FTR. I don't think they had a future in WWE. Right now, FTR are probably my favorite tag team of all time. Like in 2022 alone, they had three belts. They had the AEW tag team. They had the AAA tag team. They had the Ring of Honor tag team. Uh, they've had five plus star matches with the likes of the Lucha Bros, the Young Bucks, the Briscoes. It's such good shit. These guys are undoubtedly an S tier. They have already made a huge legacy for themselves in AEW in just a span of three years. Chris Jericho, S tier, enough said. Christian Cage. Christian Cage has been more relevant in the two years he's been in AEW than the last 20 he's been in WWE. That's probably not true, but you know what I mean. So from what I can think on the top of my head, Christian has already beaten Kenny Omega and has won the Impact Championship from him on the first episode of Rampage and has also been a key storyline figure for Lucha Boy. Why do they call him Lucha Boy? I'm in Jungle Boy, Luchasaurus, Wardlow. I am pretty safe to say that he's been utilized well, so I'm giving him an A tier. Christopher Daniels. SCU. You know, I really forgot this guy was still in AEW, but he's definitely been a helping hand during the first two years of the company. But I mean, he's not terrible, so I'm gonna put him at a C. Best friends. It's kind of crazy how best friends really haven't won a tag team title despite being one of the first guys on the roster. Despite all that, best friends are a very solid tag team and have a few accolades underneath their belt, such as that street match against Santana and Ortiz back in 2021. Um, they're they're a solid tag team. I'm gonna give them a B. Claudio Castagnoli. Claudio alone makes the Blackpool Combat Club look more legit. Like, the guy's shredded. The guy can beat people up. Um, he's already, um, he's a, he's a Ring of Honor champion on something. I just don't know what it was again. But he's definitely a really valuable player for AEW. I'm gonna put him at an A. CM Punk. S tier. Number one. 
absolute goat is what I would say if I was completely biased. But um, yeah, I don't know. If it wasn't for that injury and the all out incident, Punk's comeback story would have been cinema. But somehow AEW managed to pick that up. I really hope that Punk does get another opportunity at the belt, but I just, I'm not really holding my chances at that. Um, he's, he's like a low S in my opinion. That match with MJF was fired though. Cold Cabana, kind of wild that these two are right next to each other on the roster. Uh, I like Cold Cabana, but whatever he's done really never captured my attention. Uh, the most I remember him for was his stink in the Dark Order, but even that didn't last that long. Uh, I don't know. I'm just gonna put him at a maybe a C. I think if I put him D, that'd be way too low. But yeah, no, C is good enough. Danhausen. Knowing that Danhausen is a comedy gimmick, I really can't say that the gimmick is dumb. But what I could say is that whatever they give Danhausen, he manages to make it work somehow. Uh, not the greatest in ring worker, but definitely solid. I'm gonna put him at a C. Daniel Garcia. At first, Garcia did not click. I thought he was pretty generic. I thought he was pretty boring. But after him joining the Jericho Appreciation Society, he really started to stand out. Um, I feel like he's super over with that hip gesture thing. It suits him. It's a funny and a cocky taunt. So um, yeah, I think I'm gonna put him at a maybe a B, maybe an yeah, I think a B is good enough. Top flight. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna say it. I love both Dante and Darius, but these guys cannot catch a break. It always seems like whenever these guys catch momentum, one of them get injured. And it sucks because these are like two of the most talented high flyers. And I don't know, it's because of that that gives them a few highlights on their career. And because of that, I'm unfortunately gonna put them at a C. Darby Allen. Now, Darby Allen is an automatic S tier. The guy is a straight out badass. His presentation, his personality, his moveset, uh, his ability to soak in pain kind of scares me. He's had, he's been on TV a lot. He's had a great relationship with Sting. He's had a legendary title run with the TNT title. He just does it for the love of the game. And because of that, he's over with everyone. He's over with kids, he's over with adults. He's an obvious S tier. Dustin Rhodes, the better Rhodes. Whether you know him as Gold Dust or now Dust, his run in AEW really changed the perspective of everyone, including myself. I kind of thought of him as a joke when he was in WWE, but ever since his first match against Cody back at the first AEW pay per view, it really, really, really changed my mind about him. Yeah, no, he has, and he hasn't lost a step either, so I'm gonna put him at a B tier. I think that's fair. Eddie Kingston. Hot take. I like Eddie Kingston. However, I feel like his gimmick has remained the same for a while. Uh, it's not to say that he's boring because a guy can convert me to Christianity or whatever religion if he preached whatever book to me. But uh, I feel like maybe a way to reinvigorate his career is if we saw a new version of Eddie Kingston where he just, I guess, fought all his demons, became the absolute best, became strong, won, maybe win the TNT title. I would like to see that. Hopefully that could ever happen, maybe. Uh, but for now, he's going to get a B. All ego Ethan Page. Uh, I will be honest, I'm gonna put Ethan Page on a D, mainly because I just found him lost in the shuffle and he just felt like a counterfeit MGF. But with the storyline with Matt Hardy and Isaiah Cassidy, seeing him slowly open up as a babyface is a little bit hype. And I don't know, maybe this does have the potential of becoming one of the most over storylines in AEW. I could be wrong. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's gonna. I'm gonna put him at a C. Hopefully, this could be his breakout moment. Griff Garrison. I kind of forgot this guy was in AEW. Um, I heard reports that Brian Pullman Jr. is at the WWE Developmental Center. So just hearing that, I really don't know whether or not Griff Garrison even has a future in AEW. It sounds harsh, but I really don't know. So I'm gonna put him at a uh -huh. hook. Hook is overrated. Fight me. Wait, wait, wait. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I like his presentation. I love his look. Everything about him is great so far. I, I, I do feel like the charm that when he was first there is now gone. But uh, his feud with Jungle Boy has been a step in the right direction. Here's an update. As of this recording, he just lost the FDR title. So uh, uh, for now, he's getting a B. Private party. Cool dudes. Funny gimmick. I think Isaiah Cassidy definitely has become more over. Him and Matt Hardy definitely make a great team. I do miss Mark Quinn, but hopefully they can bounce back into the title scene the moment that Mark Quinn gets better. Um, for now, they just get a B. Jungle Boy. Jungle Boy did nothing wrong. There, I said it. I can see why everyone is pissed off, but I mean, to be honest, the guy has had the most matches in 2020 and 2021. And he's won the tag team titles with his former best friend, now turned evil. And he's now TNT champion. And Meanwhile, Jack Perry doesn't really have anything to prove it. I mean, he has his girl, but that doesn't matter. And then here comes Hook with his FTR title, an unrecognized title. Bruh, give me that. Uh, anyways, uh, I met Jungle Boy. He's pretty cool. Um, he's an S tier for me. Jake Hager. Don't hate Hager, but he's pretty boring, even with a hat. Uh, D tier.
Jay Lethal. Jay Lethal is criminally underrated. I never was into TNA or Ring of Honor at the time because I was just a naive WWE fan. Um, but after looking at some of his old matches as well as his work in AEW, I mean, man, I'm sorry, Jay. I really missed out on you. Please accept this as an apology. Bullet Club Gold. I gotta be honest with you, I was not familiar with Bullet Club Gold prior to being an AEW fan, but goddamn, like, after their recent hour-long match with FTR on Collision, both White and Robinson have really surprised me and they're definitely one of my favorite tag teams on the roster. Considering that they haven't been in AEW for that long, I really hope that we see more of them like this. Uh, I, it's too early to put them at an S tier, but I think, um, I think maybe an A would work. Jeff Hardy, oh jeez. Jeff Hardy will forever have a place in my heart, but to be honest, man, I think he should focus on a new wrestling style that won't destroy his body. I love the guy, but I, I worry about him a lot. And um, I don't know. Yeah, I think Hardy has to get a low C for me. I have been ranking tag teams together, but I feel like Jeff Hardy and Matt Hardy really haven't been working much together for me to say that, you know, one is better than the other. I feel like Matt Hardy is definitely on a league of his own compared to Jeff. But uh, yeah, low C for me. Jeff Jarrett. Honestly, he's such a gem. Growing up as a wrestling fan, I just never watched Jeff Jarrett in his prime. So, um, I mean, the fact that he's still good in the ring for his age is a testament to how great he is. I am currently a recovering, ignorant Jeff Jarrett bigot, and I am asking you for your forgiveness. Please accept this B. Johnny TV. I don't know how long he's been in AEW for. The guy is amazing nonetheless. I really don't think he needs to prove himself in AEW. So, uh, I'm, I think it's fair to put him out of C. John Moxley. The guy is an easy S tier. The guy it has an amazing resume, such as being a three-time AEW champion, being the leader of the Blackpool Combat Club, having a badass entrance, a no f attitude. I know Kenny and the Bucks are the soul of the company, but Moxley is hands down the face of the company. The guy is just a total package and you cannot ask me otherwise. Keith Lee. I think we could all agree that Keith Lee has had better days elsewhere. I'm not shitting on the guy that he's washed out or sucks but i feel like he is a bit lost in the shuffle i also do feel that the whole swerve strickland storyline was outplayed for a bit um i really don't know where to put him i think maybe a low b might be fitting kenny omega now this guy is undoubtedly an s without him we probably wouldn't even be making this list as earlier mentioned i said that john moxley is the face of aew but omega is the soul of the company you can honestly watch any kenny omega match and not be disappointed some notable ones that i can think of um it could come with moxley adam page the tag team match versus ftr the stadium stampede i i haven't even mentioned his reign of gold truly omega is a once in a generation talent Kip Sabian. I kind of feel bad for Kip Sabian, not because he's been there since day one, but because they were building him by having him sit in the front row for six months wearing a box, and then by the time that he did return, he was gone again. Regardless, I mean, he does present himself pretty well. I do like his look. Um, yeah, I also met him alongside Penelope, so um, yeah, I don't know. Let's see. Commander. I really don't know this guy, to be honest. I know he had a pretty good match with Chris Jericho on the August 12th Dynamite, but that's really all I know. And it doesn't really help me that he hasn't won a match in AEW, so, uh, yeah. I I'm gonna put him in the, huh? Konosuke Takeshita. Wait, did I just pronounce a Japanese name right? Okay, right now, Takeshita has a rocket strap to himself. And I'm all in for it. I think people saw him from a mile away that this guy was special. Like, the guy is pretty talented for his age. Currently, he's managed by Don Callis alongside the Blackpool Combat Club, although that might have changed. Uh, who knows? Who knows? Maybe something might happen. But yeah, no, I'm all in for this push. For now, he's getting a B. All the open. Um, this might be a hot take, but I really don't know. I mean, I've seen their work outside of AEW. They actually won um, an ROH title last night. I didn't watch it, but I just know they did that. So <laughs> it'd be kind of bad to put them at a C, but this was already like before like writing this so yeah they're just gonna get a C for this Kyle O'Reilly man whatever happened to this dude did he like quit or no actually wait I just found out this guy uh has an injury it kind of sucks because the guy's been gone for a year and it wouldn't be fair to give him a D because I know his work with him and Bobby Fish were pretty good as Red Dragon but you know since that whole fallout he's been not on he hasn't been on TV for a bit and I really hope that he's doing well hopefully he does return I'm gonna give him a C Let's move on. Lance Archer. Everybody dies. 
dude, Archer is like a complete badass, and the fact that he's like managed by Jake the Snake makes it so much better. The fact that Jake the Snake can still pull a promo, it is awesome. It would be cool if AEW would build Archer like the same way they built Braun Strowman in 2017 and 2018. Um, I feel like if he was like that, I would definitely put him at an A, maybe an S tier, but, uh, I don't know, he's definitely a high B. Lee Johnson. Yeah, I don't know, I mean, uh, he's mainly been featured on Dark and Elevation and has had a few Battle Royales on an episode of Dynamite, but, uh, yeah, the, the most prominent match I could probably think of is the one against Miro on Rampage, but, uh, I don't know. Yeah, the guy gets like a huh? It doesn't even help that his name is Lee Johnson, like, the name is pretty generic itself. Lee Moriarty! See, it's already better than Lee Johnson. Yeah, he's great in the ring, but really lacks personality. I don't know. I just don't really care for him. Uh, he gets like a C. Luchasaurus. I gotta be honest with you, I'm not exactly sure where this heel turn is going. I also forgot that he was TNT champion because, you know, Christian has been holding it 100% of the time. <laughs> um, I guess him turning heel is for the better. I mean, he kind of already lacked personality to begin with. Um, I don't know. I think I'm just gonna put him at a C. Mark Briscoe. Man, God bless Jay. Mm. You know, despite everything that's happened to him, um, he's really managed to pull himself through. His storyline between FTR, Jeff Jarrett, Jay Lethal, such an entertaining storyline. Much love to Mark. Uh, the guy's a solid A for me. Smart Mark Sterling. I, I don't care. Matt Hardy. You know, give credit where credit is due. Matt Hardy's debut in 2020 was pretty weird to say the least, but three years later, he's really given it 110%, and he just seems really happy at where he's at. He's still a legend, and he still puts on a great match. Um, it's also still over with the Dilly gimmick, so um, yeah, he's a solid B, in my opinion. The Young Bucks. Are the Bucks one of the best tag teams ever? Oh yeah, are they the best tag team ever? You know, that's really up for debate. I, I mean, you really can't name a bad Young Bucks match. I'm mostly familiar with their best matches. The ones like uh, FTR, the Lucha Bros, the Briscoes. Uh, Kenny Omega and Adam Page was like a freaking hypernova in front of your eyes. I mean, they get an S tier, to be honest. Matt Seidel. The first thing that comes to mind to Matt Seidel um, is either, you know, when it comes to Matt Seidel, the only things that come to mind are his wicked RKO spot with Randy Orton and the time that he almost broke his neck on his debut match. Um, I don't know. He, he gets a D. I love you, Matt, but, you know, uh, I don't know. You just don't stick out in AEW, unfortunately. Michael Nakazawa. Good worker, just don't care about him. He got the D. Miro! Miro had one hell of a TNT run. Um, I think he's currently the second longest reign behind Darby, but you know, after that reign came to an end, he, it, it, his overall TV appearances just stopped. And I don't know, that just made me really sad. I really want to see more of Miro, but uh, hopefully his time in collision does get better. But uh, for now, he gets a B. MJF. Did you guys actually know that MJF's theme song is actually royalty free music? <laughs> Career alone, but that would just be for another day. Honestly, I could just make an entire video on MJF alone, but since his debut in AEW, since the very, very beginning, he's already caught heat just by calling everyone versions. Way to, way to start the flame, buddy. Over the past four years, MGF has built his character to the very top, and now he's already AEW champion. So far, his storyline with Adam Cole has just been nothing but amazing, and honestly, I just really can't say anything bad about MGF. Yeah, I don't know. The guy's just a solid ass, you know? He's a high ass, actually. My lawyers advise me not to rank a child. Nick Comorado. I don't know who this guy is. Nick Wayne. Nick Wayne gets a uh, huh? Like, I know he just debuted, but like... You know, you gotta start somewhere, and, and I'm just gonna start him at the bottom of the barrel. Hopefully he gets better, but for now, yeah. Huh? Orange Cassidy, despite having the most laid-back gimmick on the entire roster, the man is a complete workhorse. I could be wrong on this, but I think he holds the bout for the most matches in AEW, and that's not even mentioning his legendary international championship defenses. Like, I think he's already done like 20 or 30 of them already. Um, that's already more than Roman Reigns, to put into context. Yeah, no, um, without a doubt, Orange Cassidy is probably the best acquisition for AEW. The guy easily gets an S. Santana and Ortiz. Man, I really miss these guys, to be honest. Uh, they had a really hot run back when they were in the inner circle. But now times have changed and, like, they're just currently out on the shelf. You know, with the tag team scene more intense than ever, I really wonder if these guys will ever catch up. I, I really hope they just, you know, get back together. Uh, I'm unfortunately gonna put them at a C. Pac. 
Hawk has actually been a great addition for AEW. The guy is in fantastic shape. He sells phenomenally. His match against Claudio, I actually saw that match last night. It was actually really good. You know, if you were the main event player, I would definitely put him in the S rank, but uh, I think an A is good for now. Parker Boudreaux. Did I just pronounce that right? I hope I did. Um, all he does on TV is straighten his jacket and that's literally it. I don't know. I kind of feel bad for this guy knowing that he had big shoes to fill when everyone was calling him the next Brock Lesnar by the IWC. It's not really his fault, but uh, yeah, I just don't find him interesting now. I'm going to give him a D. Paul White. I think Paul White is a great acquisition for AEW outside of the ring, that is. Considering that Paul White, formerly known as The Big Show, is now 51 and can barely move in the ring, I don't think he needs to prove himself, but... You know, considering that this is an AEW tier list, and I don't know, he just hasn't done much. But like I said, it's just that this is a tier list. <laughs> so yeah, D for me. The Lucha Bros. I've already mentioned several times the matches that they've had with other wrestlers. So I won't say it again. These guys are just badasses. They're probably one of the greatest tag teams in AEW. They get an S. Peter Avalon. Uh, I don't know. This guy just needs a better presentation. I don't know. I give him a, huh? Powerhouse Hobbs. Bruh, from day one, this guy went from chunky to shredded. Like, massive props to this guy. He's really improved over the past few years, and he's definitely in a good place in the card. For what he's been given, it's pretty hit or miss, but Hobbs is definitely a key player and has a lot of time to improve. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe in 10 years, this guy could be a megastar. I'm giving him a solid B. Preston Vance. He honestly feels lost in the shuffle and I really haven't seen much of him to give him a definitive score. Like he's solid in the ring but doesn't stand out. And I'm just gonna give him a C. QT Marshall. QT is honestly really underrated. I think people who just don't get him just don't get his character. I guess a pretty good example is like The Miz or Baron Corbin where he's more of a mid-card barrier against any opponent. But uh, no, I, honestly, I just don't hate this guy. I think he's pretty good at what he does. Um, I'm gonna give him a B. Ricky Starks. 2022 and beyond has been a shiny moment for Ricky as he's really cemented himself as a soon to be top guy. The guy is hella charismatic, amazing on the mic, he really reminds me of The Rock whenever he talks, and his in-ring performance is spot on. I do wish it was booked better, but still. I mean, he's he's done well for himself, he's won the Owen Cup final, dirty, I think this could be a chance for a heel turn. I did like him more as a heel rather than a babyface, but he's getting an A, he's a solid A for me. Roderick Strong. Roderick's a great wrestler, but honestly, he's only had four matches in AEW and has barely made an impact. I think for now, it's best to put him at a C. Roosh. Roosh can actually play a heel pretty well. Is a solid worker. Um, one of the notable matches I could probably think of is the one with Brian Danielson, but uh, that's all I can think of. I do hope he gets better in the ring. I do hope he gets better just speaking overall, but yeah, he's a C at best. Sammy Guevara. Hmm, this one might be a tricky one. Out of all the four pillars, I really think that Sammy has had the shakiest career. Like, starting from the very beginning when he got suspended for some previous comments that he's made. There was the Matt Hardy incident. There was a lot of go-away heat for him, but, you know, despite all of that, Sammy time and time again has not let the haters get to him. And it's that thing that I can respect about him because he's been able to build himself back up. He's already a three-time TNT champion. I really don't know whether or not he's a low S or a high A. Um, I guess I could put him in an A. I don't know. It's my list. Let's move on. Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe in AEW and becoming ROH TV champion really made me forget that prior to this, he was working in the rain in a plastic bag. But yeah, no, overall, Samoa Joe is featured more as an obstacle to get by rather than a person in the title scene. I wish he was booked better, but overall, he's a solid B. Satnam Singh. Yeah, this guy cannot do a five-star clinic for shit, but his height alone is probably the only saving grace. Satnam stands at 7'4". That is three inches taller than Shaq for context. Um, his stature and size can definitely intimidate anyone, and I feel like that's the good thing about his position in the company, where he plays as a bodyguard for Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett. He does that really well, and I really like seeing him on screen, so yeah, he's not the worst. Um, I'll give him a C. Scorpio Sky. Now, Scorpio Sky is currently in the midst of a push, but prior to this, I really just didn't care for this guy. I mean, the guy kind of lacks a bit of charisma. Uh, he just never stood out for me. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt that he'll change my mind, but for now, he's a high C in my opinion. Sean Dean. All I know him is that he got that upset victory against MGF. Other than saying he's a solid worker, I don't know what else to say about him. I guess he's like a C. 
Sean Spears, you know it's kind of funny that when Sean Spears first debuted, he threw away his Perfect 10 gimmick, but now he just seems to embrace it. I don't know, I, I do like him, I really do like him, but it's just like, eh, I feel like there's nothing for him that, he hasn't been on anything long term. Uh, maybe a C, he's a C in my opinion. Sanjay Dutt, wait this guy wrestle? Oh, uh, I can see why it didn't go well. Yeah, no, this guy is a, huh? Sunny Kiss. Yeah, I don't know. Sunny Kiss, she's definitely not my cup of tea. She definitely has an audience, but uh, uh she's not that great in the ring, honestly. D rank? Sting. All I could say is that I'm happy for Sting to be able to come out of retirement following that nasty injury that happened like seven years ago. Um, you know, despite all that, Sting has been killing it. This, like, the guy is 64 and he manages to put on great matches. I do feel like his rub that he gave on Darby really helped him become an overall better wrestler. And I, I think it's just, I just like it when Tony Schiavone always says, It's Sting! Overall legend. I cannot hate this guy. One thing that might bump him down to like an A is if he has a retirement match and it just sucks. But uh, other than that, I hope you do deliver a great retirement match. You are an S. Stokely Hathaway. You know, I was going to put him in the ha huh category, but to be honest, Stokely is a really funny character from time to time. He does great as a manager and... Uh, yeah, it's usually, it's kind of funny whenever he gets his ass kicked. So, uh, yeah, no, he, I, I give him a C. Swerve Strickland. I'm yearning for a Swerve Strickland title run. You know, I still think about that match he had with Orange Cassidy for the International Championship. I really believe he should have won that match. Um, anyway, Swerve Strickland, he's really talented. He's a great wrestler. He, grow, he just throws great promos. I cannot hate this guy. Um, he did win the Tag Team Championships with Keith Lee, which is uh, kind of a mixed run, but whatever. I do hope he gets pushed to the main event scene. I really do. Um, I'm giving him an A. The Butcher and the Blade. The Butcher and the Blade are good examples of tag teams that don't need to talk because they're already intimidating to begin with. I feel like these two work great as a barrier for any newcomer or seasoned star. And honestly, uh, shout out to the Butcher for losing that beer belly. The dude is looking great. <laughs> uh, yeah, he get, they get a B. Wardlow. Man, I, I just really want Wardlow to succeed. The guy is super over with his Powerbomb Symphony. The guy is a total package. I honestly don't know what's happening that they're not using him to his full potential, but I really want Wardlow to succeed. It, it just and it really sucks that his TNT title reign just did not go as well as many people expected. I don't know. I just hope he, I just hope he climbs up to the main event scene. The guy is too talented to like not put on screen. I, I just love him. Wheeler Yuta. Now Wheeler Yuta sure had an interesting start in AEW, first being a part of the best friends following Trent's injury. He was kind of a happy-go-lucky guy, but it wasn't until he joined the Blackpool Combat Club that really changed them. And ever since that day, Yuta has been on fire. I mean, the guy looks more legit than ever, and he's a reliable worker, so he's a high A for me in my opinion. Last but not least, Zach Clayton. Yeah, I don't know who this guy is. <laughs> well guys, I hope you enjoyed that main roster tier list. Wait, I just forgot the women. All right, let's just do this quick. Abaddon. Abaddon is pretty cool and unique in my opinion. They definitely play their role well. I think they're a great way to market Halloween, to be honest. Did I also mention that they have a really solid record of just 41 and three, which is um, pretty good for someone who doesn't make a lot of TV appearances. I do wish Abaddon was booked better, but uh, yeah, they're a solid C. Anna J. she has a fat ass and a bad attitude. Yes, yes she does. Anna J is hardcore, no doubt about it. She's already proved herself time and time again that she can get bloody in the ring. With only four years of experience in their belt, I really hope she does continue to climb up the ranks. Maybe get a chance at the TBS title. For now, uh, she's getting a B. Athena. That cool jacket Athena had during her debut was pretty cool. Uh, it kind of sucks that she doesn't use it anymore. Athena's run in AEW has been pretty great so far. She's currently the ROH Women's Champion and a dominant one at that. I don't know. I do hope she's more featured on TV. I know she's in ROH, but I do wish she was in AEW. Um, she's a B. Britt Baker. Britt Baker is definitely an S rank. I know, hot take. I feel like she's gotten a bit sloppy in the ring recently, but I mean, regardless, she's kind of cemented herself as being one of the most important key figures for AEW. She can get bloody in the ring if she has to. Uh, I love their match with Thunder Rosa. I feel like those two work together, but uh, yeah. Um, yeah, no, she's a D. She's an S, I mean. She's an S. Diamante. I kind of lost interest in Diamante. I know I saw her like on Dark and Dynamite a few times, but uh, she doesn't really stand out. I'll give her a D. Emi Sakurai. 
Yeah, she's another person who was, I'm just not interested. She was heavily used during the early days of AEW, but uh, as the roster grew, she was just pushed down the ranks. Yeah, no, I, she's mostly known for her work outside of AEW, um, but here I'm going to put her at a D. Harley Cameron. Uh, I mean, she's pretty. <laughs> I don't really know a lot about her. Um, I'm just going to put her in the huh, because uh, I just don't know what to think about her. Hikaru Shida. Now, Shida should definitely be given another title opportunity for carrying the title during the pandemic. I really think that she still has a lot to offer for AEW. Um, she's just straight out awesome. I'll give her a S rank. Jade Cargill. I personally like her. She definitely has the look and charm, and not to mention that 500 day reign as champion really gave her a lot of TV time. I can't remember any of her matches though because they were mostly, uh, you know, local talent. And it was kind of ironic how the TBS title was being defended mainly on Rampage, which is on TNT. Um, yeah, I don't know. She's a B. Jamie Hayter. Yeah, I love Jamie Hayter. She's definitely hot with the crowd. She has a pretty killer clothesline, a bop and theme, look great with the title around her waist. I mean, I haven't seen anyone this over since like Becky Lynch. And that's that's awesome. I, I really she really deserves the success. I, she really deserves it. I do hope, I do hope, I pray every day that when she comes back, she is booked to the top because I absolutely love her. She is an S rank. Julia Hart. Her House of Black gimmick is a lot cooler than that cheerleader gimmick she had, but uh, I'd be lying if I said I care about her wrestling. I think she needs a few more years of experience, but I mean, her position in the House of Black is pretty good overall. I'll give her a C. Kira Hogan. I really don't care about Kira Hogan. I just haven't seen enough of her. I'm going to put her at a huh. Chris Statlander, it wouldn't be fair to put her at an S considering she's been injured for a while, but uh, I do hope that she does have a legendary TBS title reign, something similar to maybe Orange Cassidy's international title reign. I think she can definitely put on great matches. So I'm going to put her at an A. Layla Gray, really haven't seen much of Layla Gray. I, I think she was part of the baddies. I don't know. Uh, she's a huh. Layla Hirsch. Layla is one of those wrestlers that she's great in the ring but fails to stand out. You know, I heard she's gotten better in the mic, but uh, I don't know about that because I just don't watch ROH. It's not because I'm bored of it, it's just that I just don't have the time. I, have to, I haven't been given a chance to see, so uh, I'm gonna put her out of C for now. Madison Rain. I don't know a lot about Madison Rain. Apparently, she's been in the business for 18 plus years, which is kind of bad for me to say that she seems to have a larger impact on other promotions that isn't AEW if, if this was like a TNA list she'd probably be higher but yeah she's unfortunately a D here Marina Shafir again this is something AEW fails on and it's mainly how women are presented like she just fails to stand out she's had a fair amount of TV time and is a solid worker but I really don't care about her I think putting out our C is okay Mercedes Martinez. Mercedes is starting to get featured quite a bit on Collision and to be honest, she's starting to grow on me. However, she doesn't really talk that much and is still climbing up the ranks. Uh, for now, she gets a C, but who knows, maybe she might grow. Nyla Rose. Nyla Rose isn't on TV as much as she was compared to other years, but you know, she's a pretty good athlete. She's also pretty funny on Twitter, so you know, there's some extra points there. What else, what else, what else? Uh, she was the AEW Women's Champion for the first period of the pandemic, so yeah, definitely a key figure for the early days of AEW. Um, I'll give her a solid B. Paige Van Zandt. I don't care about this girl, I just know she had one match and that's it. So I'm gonna put her at, huh? Penelope Ford. She did pretty well as a manager, but I really don't think she could cut a promo. Uh, I don't know. I don't know much about her right now. I know I met her at C2E2 a while ago. I don't know. Maybe a D? Rebel. I honestly didn't know she wrestled. I'm assuming she's still pretty green, so um, I really can't judge her. I guess I'll put her at a huh? I don't know. I mean, Red Velvet, she's pretty athletic, but she's not that great in a ring. I mean, she, she's gotten better over time, but overall, she just doesn't really stand out. I'm going to put her at a D. Rio, hmm. Rio disappears a lot to pick up milk and cigarettes, but whenever she returns, it's always a huge pop. She definitely will be immortalized forever because she is the inaugural AEW Women's Champion, so without a doubt, her name will be mentioned every time in historical context. Um, oh yeah, not to mention her entrance is pretty bopping. It feels like I'm playing DDR all the time. She gets an A. If she was featured more, I'd put her at an S. Ruby Soho. I really hope Ruby Soho does get a title reign. I really want it to happen. Since her debut in All Out 2021, she's been featured quite a lot on TV with the Outcast and has proven to get hardcore from time to time. 
This may be a hot take, but she's definitely one of my top favorites, and I might be biased by putting her at an A rank. Soraya. <sighs> Dog, I'm gonna be honest with you. Soraya's return was not what I really anticipated. I'm happy that she's out of retirement, but it's pretty obvious that she's no longer in her prime, and that's really okay. I do wish she was utilized more to help newer talent, but uh, that doesn't seem to be the case. She's had better days in WWE. Um, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to put her at a D. Serena Deeb. You know, at one point, I really thought she would become women's champion. Like, I thoroughly believe she can do one more title reign. Um, I, I feel like she can still do that. I'd love to see her versus Chris Stadler in her own number one contender match. I think that would be pretty cool. Overall, she's a solid worker. Her Dalton Holds gimmick suits her well. I'm gonna give her a solid B. Uh, sk Sky Blue. Sky Blue has really been getting over for uh, reasons, but over the past few years in AEW, she has really gotten better and better and more comfortable as an on-screen figure. I do see her breaking the glass ceiling anytime soon. She's a solid B for me. Ty Mello. Ty Mello is currently out because she's soon to be a mom, but uh, since 2021, she's really been a solid wrestler and you know, she's already had some big matches under her waist, such as the two street fights with Anna Jay. There was also that title match with Hikaru Shida. I, f I do feel like the whole swapping spit gimmick with Sammy did derail her career a bit, but uh, I really can't hate Ty Mello. She's a low B for me. Maybe a high C. I think I'll put her at a B. Taya Valkyrie. Taya Valkyrie. You know what really pisses me off about Taya Valkyrie is that she had 12 TV matches and she's had like four title reigns. Like, bruh, what? I think she's great in the ring, but it really rubbed me the wrong way that she got so many title opportunities when she just made her debut, like, I don't know. Uh, she gets a C for me. The Bunny. Yeah, she's a great manager for the Butcher and Blade, but uh, as for her in-ring action, uh, I mean, she's proven herself that she can get hardcore, but uh, I don't really, I don't know. I mean, she's fine. I don't know. I, I don't care about her. She gets a C. Thunder Rosa. Thunder Rosa is honestly a really mixed bag. While there is a lot of good out of her, there was definitely some bad. Uh, for starters, I do feel like her AEW women's title reign was pretty bad. You know, like at first when she won it, it was she was on top of the world. That match alone was amazing, but I, I think she was injured during that title reign and because of that she wasn't able to defend it. She was also she also dropped it too. So there was that, and since then, Thunder Rosa really hasn't been on TV. She recently returned, and is now competing on Collision, but she has yet to have a match. I want to put her at an S, but I think she's an A. Maybe even a high B if I'm being honest, but uh, I think an A is fine. Tony Storm. Undoubtedly, Tony Storm made the right call to leave WWE because um, the moment she stepped foot, she was immediately buried in cake. And since her run in AEW, she's already become a two-time women's champion. Definitely a key player in AEW. She's got good in-ring skills, good promos. She stands out a lot. She gets an A. Willow Nightingale. Yeah, if you just like Willow, there is no saving you in life. Like, it's over. She definitely brings a fun vibe and is super over with the crowd, including me. I would love to see her go against Chris Statlander for the title. That would be really cool. Um, but yeah, she's a solid A for me. Last but not least, Yuka Sakazaki. I don't know her, to be honest. She's only had four matches and they were all on dark, so I don't know. She gets a huh. All right, now that I ranked all the talent, it's time to count down the men's roster and see who is the very best. Starting at number 118, Sanjay Dutt, Smart Mark Sterling, Anthony Agogo, Peter Avalon, Nick Comorado, Zach Clayton, The Varsity Athletes, Lee Johnson, Griff Garrison, Nick Wayne, The Spanish Announced Project, Michael Nakazawa, Brandon Cutler, Sonny Kiss, Aaron Solo, Commander, Brock Anderson, Parker Boudreaux, Matt Seidel, Bandito, Paul White, Jake Hager, Angelo Parker and Matt Menard, Stokely Hathaway, Satnam Singh, Sean Dean, Christopher Daniels, Lee Moriarty, Colt Cabana, Kip Sabian, Proud and Powerful, Jeff Hardy, Johnny TV, Kyle O'Reilly, Aussie Open, Scorpio Sky, Roderick Strong, Preston Vance, Roosh, Sean Spears, Danhausen, Ethan Page, Action and Ready, Top Flight, Brian Cage, The Dark Order, Andrade, Luchasaurus, AR Fox, QT Marshall, Private Party, Matt Hardy, The Butcher and the Blade, The Guns, Dustin Rhodes, Big Bill, Hook, Lance Archer, Jeff Jarrett, Best Friends, Keith Lee, Eddie Kingston, Powerhouse Hobbs, Miro, Daniel Garcia, Samoa Joe, Konosuke Takeshita, Jay Lethal, Billy Gunn, Wardlow, Christian Cage, Pac, Mark Briscoe, 
Ricky Starks, Bullet Club Gold, Swerve Strickland, Sammy Guevara, Wheeler Yuta, The House of Black, Claudio Castagnoli, Hangman Adam Page, Adam Cole, baby, Sting, The Acclaim, Jack Perry, CM Punk, Darby Allin, Chris Jericho, The Lucha Bros, The Young Bucks, Orange Cassidy, FTR, Brian Danielson, John Moxley, Kenny Omega, and number one, MJF. Boom. All right, on to women. Starting at number 35, Paige Van Zent, Rebel, Yuka Sakazaki, Harley Cameron, Kiara Hogan, Layla Gray, Diamante, Madison Ray, Emi Sakurai, Penelope Ford, Red Velvet, Soraya, The Bunny, Mercedes Martinez, Marina Shafir, Abaddon, Layla Hirsch, Serena Deeb, Taya Valkyrie, Julia Hart, Nyla Rose, Athena, Sky Blue, Jade Cargill, Anna Jay, Ty Mello, Willow Nightingale, Thunder Rosa, Riho, Ruby Soho, Chris Statlander, Hikaru Shida, Jamie Hayter, Dr. Britt Baker, and number one, Tony Storm. Well everyone, that was my AEW tier list. Thank you so much to everyone who made it all the way to the end. If you guys want to make your own tier list, I'll provide the links down in the description so that way you can share your opinions. I really love to see what you guys have to say. Other than that guys, if you liked this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. My name is Lewis, and I am out.